yes great uh, so uh, those are actually uh, standardized let's say uh, algorithms responsible for generating public keys and uh, pairs of public keys um, they are not unique but they are they're very famous and they're very uh, let's say commercialized uh, tools to generate public keys uh, in the context of uh, cryptography uh, from the scenarios where we can utilize the public keys, actually, we uh, generate signed certificates in digital communications. Uh, first of all, we define what is a digital certificate. Digital certificates is an ID to an object uh, or to a subject. Um, both of them, they might be uh, identified using a digital certificate. It holds the ID, the, uh, the key, the public key, something like that, mainly, mainly. Uh, this uh, digital certificate has to be signed in order to be uh, genuine and in order to be communicated and not to be uh, validating uh, a communication channel in between two communicating parties, A and B. Uh, a is going to send a message to B and he's going to communicate a tool to B uh, along with he's going to deliver the certificate. A digital certificate certifying that he is the owner and he is the uh, responsible one for what has been communicated. This digital certificate, let's say this one, has to be signed, approved, in order to give the uh, liability level, or actually to raise up the liability, in order when it has been received, the receiver has to validate it and to say, yes, this is general. How to? actually uh, sign in the certificate there are scenarios sign in the certificate there are scenarios as per the hash we defined last class uh, the hash has to be computed from the uh, original certificate the non-signed certificate and this hash extracted from this uh, non-signed certificate is going to be encrypted using a public key the encryption has to happen once happened the encrypted hash the encrypted hash is going to be concatenated with the original certificate then after we are having a signed certificate which is going to be submitted to destination this signed certificate now it is liable at a level uh, and can be communicated the signature here actually it has to be approved the signature here has to be approved by the certificate authority the ca certificate authority means the usage of the encryption scenario here in a public key and uh, concatenation context has to be validated by an authority, nominated certificate authority, uh, which, is, which is going to, to validate uh, this signed uh, digital certificate. Simply, simply. Another usage, another usage of the uh, public keys, another usage of the public keys is the generation of uh, digital envelopes. Uh, digital envelopes is another context how to authenticate and to secure a message being communicated over a network over a computer network let's say a message originally generated has to be encrypted to generate an encrypted message a cipher means in addition to this cipher the public key itself is going to be encrypted the public key itself used to encrypt the message in order to generate the cipher has to be encrypted to generate an encrypted key which is conventional one symmetric remember this symmetric and encrypted key is going to be concatenated along with the uh, with the uh, cipher or the communicate sorry the uh, encrypted message all together all together they are generating the digi digital envelope so concatenating the cipher the digital message in addition to the uh, encrypted uh, uh, symmetric key generates a digital envelope this is what is going to be submitted through the network or, or through the uh, communication media in order to be received at the end. From the other side, at the receiver, at the receiver side, the digital envelope is going to be received. So it has to be decrypted or it has to pass through the phases in order to extract at the end the original submitted message. The original message has to be submitted and has to be read. So in order to read it and to be able to read it, we have to let's say go in details uh, inside the uh, digital envelope so first of all we de assemble the elements of the digital envelope which are the uh, encrypted message and the encrypted symmetric key two elements then using the standardized uh, algorithm we are going to decrypt we are going to decrypt the uh, uh, encrypted message and the encrypted uh, uh, symmetric key using what using a private key using a private key 
here we are not talking about asymmetric we're talking about about asymmetric non-conventional encryption here we are using a public key to encrypt here we are using a private key to decrypt thus thus we will find the uh, we extract we'll be able to read the and extract the uh, plain text the original main message in order to be uh, displayed is one of the other user usabilities of the public key uh, algorithms uh, I asked you before we start this class, and I'm giving you five minutes for that. Actually, the uh, the uh, benefit of using random numbers to generate uh, actually public keys mainly, not only uh, the context of the number, uh, or let's say uh, random numbers to be generated. Actually, it is a good uh, a good positive side to be added. Why? Because it is only a computer that who who is going to predict. Um, it's not a context of prediction here, but it is. Uh, it is less, uh, less. Uh, there is less chance to guess what would be the key element or key, uh, let's say, a value uh, for attackers uh, when doing a brute force or when doing a dictionary attack. Uh, when utilizing this context of random numbers, assignment to generate a public key, we are elevating uh, one step further the security of the uh, public key uh, used in the enc encryption. Uh, because if we are using a serial number uh, for the keys, one, two, three, four, and so on, it would be much more easier than when we are using a, a random number, one, ten, seven, two, fifteen, whatever. They are not uh, sequentially ordered. The security level is a little bit, actually, one level, let's say, uh, ele elevated. That is the positive, uh, positive side at the end of the day. It is much more consuming time, yes, absolutely, than the uh, maybe it's not it's not mandatory to, we'll not actually if, uh, note the time even even in, in a computer uh, level means in milliseconds or even in a, a smaller a smaller amounts of time yet for sure it is a guarantee in one level further in the context of security good uh, and this actually this uh, context of randomness would enhance the unpredictability of the uh, of the of the uh, public keys because as we said if they are serialized so, so we predict after one is two after two is three after three is four and so on but with the randomness no we cannot predict so unpredictability is guaranteed uh, good still in the same context Uh, actually, there are gener the generators. I may utilize the word actually uh, the, uh, of the uh, sort of, of the uh, let's say uh, uh, conventional keys of uh, symmetric keys, and those generators they are uh, as we discussed uh, algorithms that they are specific in doing uh, in doing such task, generating the pseudo random or generating a, a, a random in order to to uh, to. Fulfill or finish the uh, assignment of a public key. There are so, amongst the characteristics we are going to now dif um, differentiate between two aspects um, uh, via which we see the usage of the random key or the pseudo random uh, key. Let me show you your graph. That's why I do. Good. Uh, uh, we'll come to that. We'll come to that. So the context here, actually, via which we we see the generation of uh, a key is uh, uh, is almost hundred uh, percent uh, random. Whether we are utilizing a random algorithm or a random algorithm generator. Uh, in all cases, we are eliminating the context of uh, being uh, predict predictable. Uh, it is non-deterministic, means uh, we are going we are going to generate. When we talk about a random, we are not going to generate a, a, a fixed length for the key. We are not going to give, uh, for example, a one number uh, based key or two numbers based key. We are not going to uh, predict anything. Yet, yet when we talk about the pseudo random uh, assignment, we are just breaking this rule and we are uh, setting a specific size for example we are going to set uh, a key made up of three numbers means 
that starts from 100 until 999 nine, 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 nine uh, so we are specifying the uh, we are pre we actually we are spe specifying that the number the key is deterministic in the context of um, here it is still random here it is still uh, uh, unpredictable yet it is de deterministic in the sense of in the sense of uh, when I say a random number from one to thousand, it's much more harder than when we detect a number from one hundred to one thousand. Sorry, one to nine nine nine. So the range of search or guess, uh, guess an activity, or let's say dictionary attack brought force, would take less time and less effort. Uh, it is another context why we refer to this or to the to the other. It depends because if we want to have less time in generating the uh, the uh, the uh, the key, we may refer to the pseudo random. If we are not caring, we are we are careless regarding the time. Let the program work and let let's raise up the security to the to the top. So we refer to the random generator. So here, in just one conclusion. The random is still it's random, yet deterministic in the sense of uh, it is uh, having a chance more likely to be detectable when we compare it with the random. It is not predictable, but it is likely to be predictable because it's deterministic. We are limiting the uh, we are limiting the uh, the value where from where we are guessing the uh, the uh, the key. Let's say. Uh, and finally, the random they are they are non-deterministic for for sure. Any questions here, please? I'm not seeing your, your your window. Please, if you have any questions, raise it up. If you have any questions, speak, pronounce, and ask the question, please. No. The others, okay. The others. Ala, any question, Ala? No, no, Okay. Applications of the, uh, let's say, uh, a cryptography in general, actually we find the cryptography in all communicated uh, medias to be applied on all communicated medias and to be uh, applied also upon all the communication platforms uh, without, uh, without exception, uh, with different uh, scenarios and different contexts and different methodologies. Yet, for all the, the cryptography, it is to be applied. So the encryption, when we say a practical application, remember that there is no restriction. Every communication uh, channel has, can be or might be encrypted. And the sign for that, since we are dealing with a network-based, let's say, uh, 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 communication, uh, the, uh, remember the uh, secure layer. The secure layer actually is one of the contexts that we have to that we may refer to uh, to transmit the data just give me a second please
so sorry for the interruption. I had a small phone call. Um, <clears throat> good. Uh, so, whenever we talk about the practical application, it, it is not restricted to one sort. I said, I give you the example of the HTTPS as an example where we are delivering web-based uh, communications. Uh, actually, the uh, the secure layer, the SSL layer is applied on all the, uh, it might be applied on all the web-based, let's say, applications. Thus, 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 here we uh, prove that the encryption and the cryptography is to be, uh, it, it might be uh, set and applied upon all communication platforms and upon all communicated data. Uh, we come to an end uh, to, um, uh, regarding the cryptography. I hope uh, it's clear. Uh, you have the reference. Unless you have any questions, I'll stop here. Do you have any questions, please? Any discussions? Why are you joining and leaving, joining and leaving? The fifth, Mr. Just let me stop the recording of the